Hello physics lovers, um, we continue our uh, unit assessment uh, revision uh, for the higher physics. Uh, this question is actually question 14 from the higher physics progressive problems Bill Kennedy. Um, these problems were given to you or are supplied with the the solutions in the in the disk. If you look at the disk HP Revs folder, uh, you'll see um, the problems and solutions from uh, Bill Kennedy's books. Um, okay, the question we're going to start with is question fourteen. As I said, um, the problem is a momentum question. Uh, as you can see, it's before and after type situation. Uh, now we're enhancing these questions um, just bear in mind that the momentum is actually a vector and as such it's got a positive direction um, a convention if you want. Uh, so for actually answering the question we should really s show the convention that we're using. However since we're using the positive uh, to the right convention uh, there's no reason to explicitly state that. Um, so to begin the question, split your answer sheet with a line into two parts before and after. Um, this basically reflects the question itself uh, as it was given to you. Um, now the data we need is the masses of the uh, the two trolleys. Uh, I have donated the uh, denoted the trolleys by A and B so we can simply put in the masses uh, as we're given uh, so mass of A is from the question 2 and mass of B the bigger trolley um, is 3 uh, we're also given the, vo the velocity of the the first trolley A as 6 meters per second. So we can write simply this down as VA um, is equal to 6. And VB, which we know as well, is stationary, so its velocity is 0. Now, the equation that we shall start with is the momentum uh, equation. The total momentum before, so we can put this as the P taught, a uh, subscript taught, um, is simply uh, the sum of the mass times the velocities. Uh, we can just state this explicitly as some mv or something like that. Uh, so that is equal to, in this case, uh, 2 times 6 plus uh, 3 times 0 uh, which is equal to 12. Uh, now this has units being my velocity uh, it's kilogram meters per second kilogram meters per second if I can uh, just write it this way um, for the moment Now, uh, continuing the solution, um, the first question asks for the speed of the trolleys immediately after the collisions. Speed V of the trolleys, that is this V here, when the trolleys stick together. Um, so we can again write what, what total momentum after the collision. Um, here in a similar vein is just simply P taught uh, again the sum of the mass times uh, um, of course uh, we're VA and we're VB are both equal here um, so if we just delete that uh, we don't know what they are, we have to calculate them. So, 
so we have a uh, mass times velocity so we can write this down as ma times v plus uh, mb times v uh, so that's where momentum after the collision uh, we can simplify that of course just to sum in the masses ma plus m b times v so we can put in the data we've got now ma plus m b is 5 so 5 v is a uh, the momentum after uh, and now we have to work out v so we have our answer right away that um, putting our total momentum 12 into the, the right hand side here 12 is equal to 5v which gives us v equal to 12 upon 5 is equal to 2 point four uh, of course meters per second and we should say uh, really uh, to the right but it's positive so by convention it's, uh, it's to the right um, so we've answered the first part of the question uh, I suppose I should show that with uh, a little e um yeah. Now continuing the solution um for the problem it says we've defined the kinetic energy before the collision. Um so we go back to our left hand side and we've defined the kinetic energy here. Um so we shall simply state what the kinetic energy is K E is sum of half mv squared basically um, so we can put sum uh, half mv squared um, here and we can put in the values of course um, it's a half uh, the mass of A is 2 so we can put 2 and uh, V A is 6 so that squared would be simply 36 uh, plus uh, for the second object uh, B and since it's stationary its kinetic energy is 0 so we've got the kinetic energy before the collision uh, it's just simply 36 being of energy it's obviously just joules in units and continuing the question we have to f now find the kinetic energy you've got it after the collision so we jump back to our solution um, if we denote this denote this by C equation and in this instance it's we have the two objects stuck together uh, as before we have a combined mass moving at a uh, velocity we've calculated at 2.4 meters per second so the kinetic energy here is equal to a half uh, the combined mass ma plus mb is 5 times the velocity squared is 2.4 um, time 2.4 I'll just put 2 here to, to show that it's, uh, it's just squared now using my calculator I get an answer for this lot of 14.4 so that's our answer here 14 point four 
yes joules again um, so we have the kinetic energy before uh, this collision and the kinetic energy after the collision. Now we're asked to determine what type of collision uh, this is. Uh, what does this mean? Well, if we go back to our momentum definitions, in this diagram uh, we're talking generally about collisions in the higher physics. Uh, we have a situation before and a situation after. Uh, this is meant to occur uh, possibly in a small interval of time. Uh, the momentum is a vector equation. Momentum is the sum of the mass times the velocities of the individual particles or objects. Uh, here we are assuming that they are colliding at some point in space. Uh, it could be three dimensional space and after they have collided and they are recoiling in some fashion uh, we label the, co the components or objects A or B or some su suitable labelling to distinguish them. Um, now the kinetic energy uh, is a scalar quantity uh, simply the sum of the half mv squared of the individual particles. Uh, there's one a thing to remember about um, these momentum questions in the higher physics is momentum before equals momentum after. This is assuming that there's no external forces or indeed uh, force fields. Uh, for instance these could be charges recoiling in an electric field uh, or massive particles uh, in a liquid for instance. Uh, where there would be external forces and we could assume uh, the conservation of momentum principle. Uh, but for these type of questions you can always assume that momentum is conserved uh, after uh, the collision has taken place. Uh, there are essentially three types of collision. Elastic, uh, there is no change in kinetic energy as well as no change in momentum. Uh, now this means that uh, energy has not been converted to any other form. Um, now the opposite to that is an inelastic um, collision. Uh, here there is a loss of energy uh, mainly due to deformation of the bodies in heavy collisions or it could be heat or it could be sound or it could be a mixture of uh, these or indeed any other form of energy. The essential uh, thing we have to remember about inelastic collisions is there's a loss of kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy before is greater than the kinetic energy after the collision. There's a final category um, of uh, collision. Uh, they call it collision uh, globally. Uh, is an explosive reaction. Uh, here the kinetic energy before the reaction is less than the kinetic energy after. There's a gain of energy eh, after the interaction or collision has taken place between the bodies. Eh, usually the kinetic energy initially is zero. Eh, this would be a an explosion an explosion in the in layman's terms of the words. Eh, you get explosive eh, interactions or collisions where bullets or missiles are projected from guns, say, um, and you get um, the other types of collision usually with the, the trolleys on the bench uh, are, are a typical example of the first two. Now uh, if we return back to our question what type of collision is it, we have to, uh, it's not the momentums we look at after it's the, it's the ratio, it's a relationship between the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after the collision. Remember that, the relationship between the kinetic energy before and the kinetic energy after the collision because the momentum will be the same. Um, here we can see our kinetic energy before is 36 joules. So we can state um, our relationship here in that um, kinetic energy before is greater than kinetic energy after. So if this is the case what we have is an inelastic collision. Um, 
here so it's an inelastic collision is the answer to the, this part of the question so that uh, summarizes the typical momentum question um, as I said just uh, be aware that you're actually dealing with vector equations here uh, these should really be vector um, uh, a vector if there's more than one component uh, like there is here you'd have to use a, a vector a momentum vector diagram the individual vectors um, would be a uh, momenta um, but in this case we're, uh, we have a a collision in a straight line um, so we don't really bother with, with the vector idea right? as long as we remember that going to the right is positive and going to the left is negative uh, we're just fortunate in this question the uh, the B body was stationary sometimes uh, they tell you that two bodies are uh, going two identical bodies are going in opposite directions before a collision for instance so uh, the momentum the sum of the momentum in that case would be zero um, so that is our typical momentum question uh, that you're likely to come across in the unit one revision so until I see you again, uh, enjoy and enjoy the rest of the questions and see if you can um, do them without any problem. Goodbye.